input uh, that particular council member didn't have before was able to relay back and modify or, or uh, help make that decision on what that community center uh, might look like. Just to kind of give you an example of what some of those goals look like uh, at a higher level, um, just kind of Mesa County, Colorado is a, a fairly significant in size, uh, it, but really that's irrelevant when it comes to goals because uh, the goals are applicable no matter the size. Uh, when we talk about uh, citizen input, when you see the, the light green bubble that comes up on the far left hand, upper, upper left hand side, is I want Ca Mesa County to manage and preserve public resources. Well, what that turned into uh, on a, a council level was the blue right underneath that, continue to efficiently and effectively protect and manage all public resources. <coughs> and then on the right hand side, feel safe anytime, anywhere in Mesa County. Well, the council's goal ended up being, or the, the county commission's goal ended up being continue to promote, protect public safety. So when we talk about goals, we're talking about community goals, community feel. What is the priority for the community itself? In this case, it was to promote uh, and protect public safety. At the bottom, continue to promote and protect public health and success uh, and the success of all citizens. These blue areas ended up being the actual city, the county goals. From here, the department staff took this back and they could develop objectives to say, well, if this is the goal, then there's certain objectives I can establish to be able to ensure that we continue to promote and protect public safety. That means something different for, say, fire and, uh, and police than it may be intended here. But those objectives become their benchmarks, if you will, on what they're aiming at. Um, continue to efficiently, effectively protect and manage all public resources. Public resource driven uh, uh, a county like Mesa County, uh, that's some, Parks and Rec became a very important part of that process. But the blue areas are the goals that they had established that they communicated back to staff and then the debate then become what are the objectives and then the tactics toward those objectives look like. Uh, another entity, Fort Collins, again, a fairly significant size uh, and again, irrelevant when it, comes to, uh, when it comes to goals. This is a more simplistic approach. Uh, the, these aren't even full sentences. Improve economic health. Again, they're high level goals that each one of these entities were able to convey back to the departments and say, here's what, some, here's, here's what our goals look like. And they can get as extensive as you want them to or as simple as you want them to. Here they were fairly simple, fairly high level, and it allowed the departments then to establish those objectives as they saw or they interpreted uh, those goals. Once the goals are established, then it comes down to documenting uh, what they look like. And really, this is where the strategic plan comes in. And when I was talking to staff earlier today, strategic planning doesn't have to be a very complicated document. In fact, I would encourage it not to be a lengthy document. It needs to be something that's, that's easily readable, uh, concise, and it also is relevant to the time you have today. When they put the work plans together, the encouragement I give them is, is to not make it very long. Make it something that, that somebody's going to read through. Make sure you understand what the current environment is. Have these six things in there. Uh, any changes in the environment based on what you saw last year? Because the last thing that, say, the public wants to do is read through pages and pages and pages of data to get to what do you see as an expert changing in today's world? Uh, how is the effectiveness uh, of what we're doing today going to change our goals or objectives. Important characteristics, we talked about time frame. Typically those work plans that, that are put together are anywhere from uh, 12, 12 months to five years, uh, any, any longer than really three and we're, it's, a, it's a guessing game in that year four and five. Um, but the time frame needs to be relevant. It needs, it needs to be very clearly de delineated how far out in the future are we measuring. Uh, measurement included in there is how do we know we've gotten to where we thought we were going to be uh, or how close have we come. Um, comprehensive and environmental analysis on an annual basis taking a look at uh, how the environment's changing. Uh, 
what's changing that we need to be paying attention to. And in the special case of government, we're talking about other plans. We're talking about infrastructure plans and comprehensive plans that these strategic plans align to. A lot of times, um, these plans have already exist. You'll have a transportation plan or a public safety plan that can be fed up into larger, say a larger citywide document. What makes it strategic? There's connections, obviously, uh, to those other plans, to goals and objectives, but then alignment. There's alignment of other entities that touch the city, whether it's a utility board, whether it's a public uh, building commission or an economic development agency. There's an alignment of each one of those, uh, of those uh, uh, entities toward your common goal. So if you want to react to a certain area of town that doesn't have infrastructure to it, that strategic plan takes into account what control you do have, what control you don't have. And it also communicates what those priorities are. Certain areas of town become relevant for construction based on certain uh, uh, benchmarks taking place. What are the priorities? Is it getting infrastructure to that area of town? Making sure that that alignment with those external boards is, is critical. Six main components, just a little bit about those main components of a strategic plan. They need to include these six things. Uh, mission statement, a SWOT analysis, again, an environmental analysis, uh, strategic issue identification, objective strate strategies, and strategic action items. Where do you begin? Uh, obviously, it starts with a mission. What is the mission of the city? What is your mission? Why do you exist? It needs to be simple and straightforward, easily understood by the public. Um, tell why the exi organization exists its purpose. Uh, and set the parameters, help uh, identify what is relevant in the environmental analysis. How do you want to interact with your citizenry? A lot of times it's developed in a retreat, and I know we do that for clients as well. Developing these uh, mission statements ends up being a governing body responsibility. What is it this uh, body looks at as a mission for why you exist? What do you need to accomplish? What do you want to accomplish? That environmental analysis comes next. It's included in that strategic plan. Again, focus groups. It really depends on uh, what the depth that you want to go into on strategic planning. Focus groups, other relevant, you know, facilitated events, uh, public hearings typically don't work, but it's a, obviously it's a uh, it's a mode that you can use. A good analysis should be broad based. Uh, and relevant to the current situation. So as 2008 hit and the economy started reducing, obviously that environmental analysis needed to take place before the next budget cycle happened. You need to be able to be nimble and react to some of that. As uh, permits start, stopped um, uh, being applied for, we knew that certain, certain staff were going to be less busy than others. And I know there, uh, anti, uh, United, I mean, nationwide, there were cities that walked in uh, to a situation where they had to they had to react with decisions they've never made before on on some of that staffing. Uh, informed research and informed by research data and expert opinions. Get your experts in your community involved in this environmental analysis. What does that look like? There's plenty of economists out there that focus on this area that can come talk to you about what does the next two to three years look like? What are some of the things that you need to be paying attention to and how might it help you? Identifying critical issues uh, when it comes to the strategies you've put in place. How is that environmental analysis going to impact the goals or the issues you set up? Um, identification of that strategic issues and establishing the broad goals. The goals should be uh, topics of the highest priority. We talked about Mesa County and Fort Collins when we talk about high level, high level goals. Focused in few, instead of having seven or eight goals, which you'll, most people would forget about, three or four. Anything past four and more than likely your brain will be full. If you have three to four, you know what those goals are, more than likely people remember them as you move forward. They can be fairly high level. Uh, goals should also emerge from the environmental analysis. So. If it's not something you saw in the following year, that environmental analysis could uh, uh, 
raise an issue to the surface that ends up being a new goal.